Alright, what's going on guys? It's Rob back with a PSP video. What we're going to be going over today is the installation of the Light Custom Firmware and Permanent Custom Firmware 6.61 ME 2.3. Uh, what this is, is basically it's the latest custom firmware that's out with the uh, ME edition. There's also the Pro C edition too, I believe there's a Pro C2 that's out right now. So what I'm going to be going over is the installation of this custom firmware. Now for people that are running 6.0 um, or 6.60 firmware you can use this release um, update to 6.61 uh, with the official firmware version which you have to go to Sony and get the specific uh, version for your specific model uh, and then install this over and it will be like an official firmware version that can run homebrew there's just no recovery menu, VSH menu, things like that. Um, but you can, it enables the homebrew environment if you don't want to get too picky. For anybody that's really kind of like a developer or a primetime PSP guy, uh, I'd recommend doing the full-fledged custom firmware, uh, which is mostly what everybody did in the past anyway. So they just kind of made this official firmware version for people that aren't too um, big into custom firmware, I guess. So there's going to be three files that I have for download below. They will be described as... Um, for official firmware version and then I will have the ME version and the light ME they're all light installs so you can install them over official firmware so what you have to do first is update again you have to update to your 6.61 official firmware get it from Sony you'll go to Sony search your PlayStation Portable 6.61 update and then scroll down and you'll see the one for 1000 and 2000 for 3000 models 2000 version 3 models and then you'll see one for PSP Go. Make sure you download the correct one and install it. If you plug it in and you go to install it and it says install based upon your proper model or whatever, that means you downloaded the wrong one. So it won't initiate the update unless you have the correct file. So you don't really have to worry about too much there. This is where it gets a little tricky, I guess, so I'm just going to go through it real quick. Once you download one of these files, for example, I'm using the PSP Go, so I'm going to be downloading the, uh, the 6.61... Um, Light ME 23 right here. So this file right here is for the PSP 2000 version 2, 3, 3000 and PSP Go. This is for the version 1001s and 2001s. Uh, this release 661 ME 23. I will have it described down again. This one will be stated as PSP 1000 or 2000 models. This one will be stated for all PSP um, models regarding 1001 and or no. Correction. These two files will be for PSP 1000 and 2000 models. This one here will be depicted for 2000 version 2, 3, 3000, and PSP Go. So seeing that I'm using a PSP Go, this is what we're going to be using. So after you download your specific file, what you're going to do is you're going to open that up. As you can see, I have the release 661 LME already opened up here, and you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff in here. You got the Inferno. The Inferno is basically the Inferno driver. It's the same thing as the M33 driver in the past, so you can run ISOs or CSOs uh, without using a UMD disk in your drive, so that way you're able to play those games without having the UMD disk in. Uh, the LEDA, if we kick back all the way to the M33 days with uh, custom firmware 5.00 M33, um, the LED driver was just kind of like a plug-in that enabled us to utilize the overclock to its full potential. So just make sure uh, if you do use that, then there you go. It's there for you if you need to reinstall it to the flash zero, say something goes wrong during installation, but most likely nothing will go wrong. And then translate the README and the README Japanese text. You don't have to worry about those too much, but those are in there anyway. So what we're going to be mainly looking at is the PSP folder. If you open up that PSP folder in your downloads, you're going to see a game folder. When you open up this game folder, you'll see an installer and launcher. And I believe that it's the same thing for the other uh, things as well. Um, I'm just going to extract it real quick to open it up. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. So, uh, ME installer. Yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. So you don't really have to worry about too much there. So I'm not going to need this, so I'll just move through my trash. But anyways, so everything's going to be the same in the other two files you download. So regardless, this is the same thing you're going to follow for PSP 1000, 2000, 3000, etc. Uh, so just follow these steps here. The only thing we're going to do differently in this video is go over the light installation and rebooting uh, that you don't necessarily have to do with the PSP 1000 or 2000. 
So once you open up that game folder in the downloads, I know there's a lot that I'm saying, open up your uh, either your system uh, memory, uh, which only has on the PSP Go, or your memory stick. And what you're going to do is you're going to locate your PSP folder there and open up your regular game folder there. What you're going to do is you're going to copy your installer and launcher folders from your DLC that you have downloaded and pop them over. As you can see, I've already done that. Once you do that, we're going to take it to the PSP. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to eject your PSP from USB mode and we're going to go install. So I apologize for the shitty video, but this will work. So after you exit USB mode, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll over to your game section. And in your game section, you're going to see the LightME installer for 661. And then you're going to see the LME launcher for 661. So don't use the launcher yet. What the launcher is, basically, it's like a recovery thing. So for an example, if you have to reboot your system and uh, do any of that crazy shit, uh, and you lose your custom firmware, you just open up this launcher here and it will go back to all your same settings that you already had so you don't have to redo everything so it's kind of like a quick save me button uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this installer up unfortunately I did already install the custom firmware so I'm gonna go to my system settings and just show you real quick uh, I would like to go through the installation uh, but you can see I'm running 661 uh, LME 2.3 and uh, that's that. Also hiding my MAC address there, so we don't have to worry about anything. So basically, all you're going to do is you're just going to boot this installer up. Make sure you select the installer first. When you get inside, you're just going to hit X and let it install all the modules. Uh, so once that's all done, it's going to exit. Then what you want to do is you're going to run... run uh, well, actually, don't run that yet. So what you want to do is like just set up all your settings. I got my overclock here, 333 over 166 for both game and XMB. Uh, USB device memory stick we have the me driver and we got the standard sony driver the m33 driver uh, the oe uh, iso files and the inferno driver i'd recommend uh, using the me driver or the inferno driver uh, iso video mount you really don't have to worry about that you can change the color of your vsh menu xmb plugins and everything you got your plugins manager right here in the vsh menu as well uh, so many plugins that you have, you can quickly enable and disable them without having to go into the recovery menu. So let's take a look at the recovery menu real quick. I'm booting up my recovery menu here. As you can see, they swapped it back to the green. Uh, configuration, skip Sony logo, skip game boot, hide corrupt icons. You don't really have to worry about that. Uh, the thing I would say to run is enable the skip Sony logo because nobody likes that damn thing. You can choose to skip the game boot if you wish. Um, again, UMD mode, the Inferno, uh, for no UMD, hide your Mac address, enable that, fake region, you don't have to really worry about that too much unless you have certain games that only run on certain regions, for an example, if you have a Japanese ISO that downloads, you can change your fake region to Japan and that game will work just like that. Um, use VSH menu, obviously you want to do that because that's like a quick kind of save me button as well protect the flash and the USB mount that's so that you don't delete anything uh, and have to worry about destroying or bricking your PSP and then last but not least let's see what else we got here uh, battery charge from USB I always have that enabled use network update uh, you can have that enabled you can have that disabled it's up to you the pick zero and pick one PNG and XMB that really isn't anything crazy all that does is like if you have like certain files that have to be in your game folder uh for specific homebrews uh that will just read as corrupt data it will hide those so you don't have to look for them uh the version text that right there the version text that's uh on your mso or your efo on on the root of that uh basically what you do is you're just typing in a version of firmware that you want your PSP to think that it's running. So that way, for an example, you'd be running 661. You can program it to say it's running at 550. So you can downgrade custom firmware to, like, say, 660 uh, or something. No DRM engine. Always have that enabled. Uh, hide custom firmware directory files. Have that enabled. And memory stick speed up. Going back to some review here, we have some advanced settings, advanced configuration, battery configuration. If you have a PSP 1000 or 2000 and you want to make a Pandora battery, you can go and make that here. So, and it's called a jig.
All right, yeah, Jig Kick Battery. That's what it's called now. It's no longer called a Pandora. Um, that's that. And then you can toggle the USB to the individual flashes without having to specifically select it for your USB device. Uh, CPU speeds, we already went over that. Plugins, we already went over that. Registry hacks, that's pretty much the basic shit still. And miscellaneous is just anything to do with the recovery menu. And when you exit the recovery menu, it's going to boot back and reset the VSH automatically. So anything that you've done is going to be saved. And with that... Once you've set up everything in your menu, you can then go and run the LME Launcher 661. What that's going to do is going to save all these settings, and anytime you reboot your device, you just boot this launcher, and everything will be the same way that you left it. So that's that, and then that's the custom firmware for uh, 661 uh, LME. Like I said, download links will be below, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Sorry again for having to film this on my phone because my remote joy light isn't working, and I don't know why, but I'm going to find out. So, talk to you all later. Bye.